so today's topic which we are going to discuss as i told that it will be a eye opening session for most of you and most of you must have heard the things which i will be discussing today but uh, i think it will be a refresher for most of the people and some of the people will learn few new things so topic of today is 10 step process for stress free financial life and let me tell you that the content of this today's session most of the content is taken from a book so i am thankful for the author to write that book and name of the book is be your own financial planner in 10 steps by manish chohan so i'll be uh, sharing the link of the book at the end of this webinar uh, there are some inputs from my side and from book side so i have created this webinar and uh, i think that at the end of this webinar you will agree that this book is a gem book which can change one's personal finance and take their life on a right path means financial life on their right path because i read this book at the age 27 and whenever i read this book i understood and i i means i was saying that uh, why i didn't read this book 10 years earlier why i didn't read this book 10 years earlier this is what i felt because if i had if i would have read this 10 years one day one decade back my personal life a personal finance life would have been at a much different level so let us start with the presentation and uh, let us start with the session so before before starting even the session so i would like to ask you one question that you're all investing in stock markets i just want to know that uh, how many months of emergency funds you have created for yourself okay and also i would like to ask uh, the people that how many means those who have not created any emergency funds please comment in the comment box uh, if you have not at all created any emergency funds please comment in the comment box if you don't have any kind of emergency funds and i would like to ask this question those who have not created emergency fund are you investing in stocks i think most of the people are investing in stocks so it's a it's a pretty dangerous situation i'll come back to that when i'll be discussing this point emergency fund so personally me myself uh, my more than 90 percent of my total money net worth is invested in stocks so for me it becomes very important because i am invested in i'm a full-time investor and a trader and 90 percent of my money is invested in stocks or or in trading uh, position or something like that for me it becomes very important to have an emergency fund of at least two years so i have created myself for uh, myself an emergency fund for two years of expenses i want to increase that to three to four years so i, I want to do that uh, so I'll, we will come back to this point. I asked this question at start because most of the people here are block followers. Uh, so that's why uh, I'm asking this question. So most of the people would have been investing in stocks. Yes. So without investing in, without creating an emergency fund and then investing in stock market, it is like driving a car without seat belt. Actually, in India, most of the people don't care about seat belts. That is a different part. But it is like driving with seat belts or driving, riding the bike without a helmet. It's very risky. So uh, we'll come back to that point. Uh, we'll start with the presentation now. I'm Mr. Suyuk Devan, founder of Strategic Alpha Bell. We are into mentoring people and helping them to become wise investor than smart investor. Actually, it, it's a program to create wise and smart investor but we focus more on creating wise investor because smart investors sometimes can go broke but wise investors don't so we teach a lot about that in our mentorship program so we are we are a premier mentorship provider and uh, strategic alpha wealth uh, i've been writing this blog strategic alpha from past four years now with a vision that uh, it should help around 
one lakh people directly or indirectly to become smart and wise investors so let us come back to the topic today's topic is 10 step process for stress free financial life so let me tell you about this this workshop is created out of inputs from the book how to be your own financial planner in 10 steps by manish chohan so let us go through a wake up call so we'll read two stories story number 1 is team so first you read this soul and then comment in the comment box whenever you finish now read this and whenever you complete this please comment in the comment box now let us go to story number 2 once you read this please comment so how do you feel after reading these two stories these two stories have any impact on you did you feel some tremors did your own life flash before your eyes and thought what if this happens in my life also and can you see that there is a there is some part of jatin and sakshi in your life too there is some part of jatin or sakshi it might not be whole so that is happening already in your life so with this story I wanted to give you a glimpse that what kind of financial issues people face. These are imaginary issues, but real issues people face in their life. This book, this book is going to take care of all these issues. So once I take all these 10 steps, you'll come to know that how valuable this book is because what I have taken is my understanding of this book. But when you read this whole book, you'll come to know that it's an eye opener. It will help you organize your financial life. So care of uh, this book is going to take care of all these issues. I'll show you the path what Mr. Manish Chauhan wants to say and I have added my inputs also in some cases. So I'll uh, talk about that. So first of all, step number one is optimize your in life by having adequate life insurance. So I'd like to ask, I want to ask you that how many of you know what is your actual insurance cover? I should see, I should be able to see 37 comments. I want interactive workshop. Please comment in the comment box. How many of you know the actual insurance cover which you are having with you? So how many of you now, now coming back to the point, I think most of the people know that how much insurance they have currently. Now, let me ask you, how many of you know that whatever insurance cover you are having is adequate insurance? It is adequate. Do you know whether it is adequate or inadequate? If you don't know, please come and not sure. So most of the people are not sure that whatever the insurance they are owning, insurance cover they are having, whether it is adequate or not. So we'll come to a calculation. So people uh, have started giving me the answer 20 times of my annual income or 10 times of annual income. So that is, that is, that is a rough answer. We'll come to the exact number. How much do we actually need and how to calculate that? So for uh, this today's example, which uh, I'll be taking, I ran a pool uh, on our main group and i came to know that average age of my community is around 34 36 34 36 so that's why i have taken this uh, example for a middle class person age 35 with two children age three and five i have to find the right insurance amount which we need so in your case what you need to do is uh, first of all what i want you to do is take a pen and paper how many of you have taken it already, pen and paper, to take the notes? Because I want you to take the notes in this session. Just take pen and paper. Just take a diary. Yes. Based on your, so I'm I'm taking one example here. Based on your actual spending and this, you can just note down the numbers accordingly in, in that ratio. For a middle class person age 35 with two children, three and five, how to find a right insurance amount which we need. So I'm just taking an example. So let us say this webinar I took for, for one community and I'm just repeating that uh, webinar today. So for an average middle class person, insurance 
for bull protection how to calculate the adequate insurance so first what are your responsibilities in your life first is child education graduation second is child education post graduation these are the most important uh, goals so let us say there are two children so first age to maturity is 15 years second age to maturity is 13 years first age might be around uh, 5 years or second second age my second uh, children age child age might be around uh, 7 years so accordingly the present cost if the graduation today if, if it is costing 5 lakh rupees in future after 15 years at 7% inflation rate it is going to cost you 1 lakh 37000 why 7% if you go back, so I'll come back on that slide. It is there in that in this slide at a later stage. How various types of inflations are moving in past, how they have performed over the past 20 years. So I'll be talking about that data. So present cost, if it is 5 lakh, it is going to be 13 lakh in future. So if you need 13 lakh and in your absence, in your absence, your wife cannot take risk to invest in stock markets or in mutual funds because she might or she might not be knowing that how to handle these investments so it is best that you have that amount fd so if you just have five lakh rupees fd this goal can be reached with six percent in uh, six percent return on fd so five lakh rupees invested today can grow to 13 lakh seventy nine thousand after 15 years so your insurance need for that graduation goal is five lakh rupees for second child same case if the cost is today 5 lakh, it is going to be 12 lakh after 13 years. So to reach that 12 lakh, you need to have 5 lakh rupees bank FD. So in case if something happens to you and insurance claim is received, at least your wife can invest that 5 lakh in bank FD uh, for uh, graduation and second child 5 lakh rupees in bank FD. In that way, for graduation alone, it, your insurance cover requirement is 10 lakh rupees. Now coming back to post graduation, that will if the current cost is around seven lakh, it will uh, rise to twenty five lakh rupees after nineteen years. So the current need of creating a FD amount is close to seven lakh rupees. So your insurance need for post graduation is seven lakh rupees. Now for the second child in the same way seven lakh rupees. So for graduation ten lakh rupees bank FD is needed if if something happens to you today itself. For post graduation. 14 lakh rupees bank FD is needed and I have not taken child marriage goal because we are in this age in future there won't be any child marriage cost this is what I believe so that's why I have not taken any child marriage goal because most of the people will either marry in court or they will have low marriages and this this cost of marriage is going to go down or it might may remain so if you think that cost of marriage will be there you can just add it but this is what I have believed and according to you I have taken it zero so let us say uh, investment need for gold protection is around 24 lakh rupees fd and housing loan most of the people average people average middle class person has an outstanding of at least 25 lakh rupees so if you take that 25 lakh rupees housing loan uh, or any liabilities if you are having so that 25 lakh plus 24 lakh that will come to around 49 lakh current household expenses if it is 3 lakh 60 thousand rupees per year i'm just taking i'm not even taking discretionary expenses i'm just taking household expenses so even if we take 30 thousand rupees basic household expenses that will be around 3 lakh 60 thousand most of the people here uh, would be around uh, 4 lakh 5 lakh rupees uh, so accordingly it can be adjusted if 30, 3 lakh 60 thousand rupees is the household expenses if you need protection for that household expenses in your absence, you will need gold protection for at least, that means household expense protection for at least 35 years. So, 3,60,000 into 35 into 1.5 inflation factor, which I am taking. So, the, the total amount needed for household expense protection itself will be 1 crore 26 lakh. This is for average middle class person. How many of you have household expense more than 3,60,000 rupees? on an annual basis most of the people have commented that they have one crore insurance so i'm just coming to that to open your eyes please comment in the comment box if you have annual expenses more than 360000 rupees per annum 36k per month yes please comment in the comment box
I want this interactive session. Please uh, let us have this interaction because I am taking this effort to take this all, all kinds of sessions. I would expect that you also come up with, uh, maybe you also cooperate with me and have some interaction, interactive sessions. Yes. So most of the people are having more than 3.6 lakh rupees and most of the people have told me that I have 1 crore insurance. So 1 crore insurance is not adequate because for household expense protection itself, it will require more than 1 crore 25 lakh. Now, if you just calculate the total amount, total required life insurance for this person is close to 1 crore 75 lakh. It will be around 1 crore 75 lakh. Now, have you got this? How do I calculate my optimum insurance need? If you just calculate yourself, then you will come to know that most of the people will be inadequate on life insurance. Now ask you if yourself, do I have adequate insurance? Please comment in the comment box, but just by rough calculation, how many of you have came to know that you have inadequate insurance? Please comment in the comment box. If you think that you are having inadequate insurance, please comment inadequate so that I understand that uh, where you stand currently. So as I said, so most of the people are telling now, means they are commenting inadequate. So what I asked, when I asked this question, how many of you have term insurance? Most of the people told that they are having insurance. But 85% of the people here today attending are having inadequate life insurance. Having inadequate, it's same like having no insurance. Having inadequate life insurance is like having no insurance because it is not going to suffice the need. I'm not even talking about want. I'm talking about the basic need, which, uh, which is uh, going to be there for the next uh, 30, 35 years in your absence. If you don't have adequate insurance, I believe that you don't care for your loved ones. How many of you have thought about this having adequate insurance? Many people don't. So I believe that I think that the people who don't have adequate insurance, you don't love your, you don't care for your loved ones. So have adequate insurance. Having adequate insurance is very important. Tragedy is that most of the people are paying one lakh rupees per year, two lakh rupees per year in the name of insurance. However, they don't have even more than ten to twenty lakh rupees insurance cover. This is the tragedy, and this happens. This is happening in India. And this is happening with more than 80-85% of the people. Uh, so insurance is an expense. And most of the people are asking this question to an advisor. Insurance is an expense. It is not an investment. Please don't ask your advisor how much money it will give me back. And I'll come to the calculation. Even if you get that money back, it will not be worth more than two months of your expense, even if the insurance company gives you money back. So one policy is enough. I have seen most of the people have 10, 15 insurance policies. So instead of number of policies, focus on insurance cover. Don't focus. So I'm having only two policies personally. So one policy is enough or to max two policies enough. Uh, there is no need for 10, 15 policies. So instead of that, have one to two policy and focus more on insurance cover. You'll think that I'm paying annual 50 K for 10 lakh policy, how much will it cost for 1.7 lakh insurance? How many of you think in the same way I'm paying 40, 50 K for 10 lakh rupees policy, how much it will cost? It is beyond my capacity. How much it will cost for 1.7 lakh crore means 1.75 crore insurance. But for your surprise, cost for term plan for 30 year term is just 10 to 12,000 for a young person. So for 1.75 crore term plan, it will cost more, not more than 50,000. This was uh, last year. Recently, insurance companies have raised the prices. It will not cost more than 50,000 rupees, even for a mid-aged person, for, for a non-smoker. How many of you think that, how many of you th thought this, that 1.75 crore 
it will it, it is beyond my affordability uh, affordability please comment in the comment box i'll give you a comparison based on that so i think I, i'm sitting with a smarter crowd today so most of the people know about term plan but still i'll just compare between the dif difference between traditional insurance and term plan plus bankruptcy plus mutual funds so i'll talk about that traditional insurance policy uh, if you are holding policies such like jeevan anand jeevan saral endowment policy and all these policies these are the names of traditional insurance policy i am not even only taking the names of lic i am i am talking about all those policies which give which will give you money back so the policies which have high premium paying uh, premium but you have less insurance cover all those policies comes under traditional insurance policy so insurance cover for let us say how much is it for 10 lakh insurance cover i am just comparing between two examples for insurance cover close to 10 lakh you will be having premium of 45000 rupees uh, 45000 rupees on annual basis premium paying term will be around 25 years total premium paid in 25 years will be around 11.25 lakh if you just do a math maturity amount after 25 years will be around 18 lakh at 4% bonus addition do you agree to this please comment in the comment box if you are having such policies which will give you double your capital close to double your capital after 25 years at 4% burn bonus addition yes so let us come back to the comparison who think that i want my money back i want my money back i don't want to just spend on insurance so let us move ahead instead of that what i did is for the same insurance cover of 10 lakh i purchased a term plan for 10 lakh insurance it will be costing me not more than 2000 rupees on an annual basis and whatever the money is left what i did is i did a monthly recurring deposit of 3600 rupees i did a monthly recurring deposit of 3600 rupees total premium paid will be around 50000 rupees total invested amount in recurring deposit is around 10 lakh 8000 which is close to 11 lakh which i told uh, in the earlier example so even if we invest in bank rd maturity amount maturity amount from that bank rd will be around 29 lakh at 7% cagr so this was last year when i took this webinar 7% cagr uh, now it has it is close to 5.5 6% so even in in bank fd a bank rd it will be close to 29 lakh compared to what you are getting 18 lakh in earlier case now if someone does a sip i am talking about mutual fund sip not even direct stock investing i am talking about mutual fund sip if someone does a sip of 3000 rupees 3600 rupees monthly he will get 167 lakh at 12% cagr so do you think that getting 12% per annum from mutual funds is a difficult job i am just taking 12% return per annum getting 12% return on a longer term from mutual funds please comment in the comment box do you think is it difficult to get 12% return from mutual funds equity mutual funds in long term so most of the people will agree that in mutual funds you will get at least 12 to 15% return in long term so even if you do just most of the people what they do is uh they just mix insurance with investments please never do that please never do that whenever you mix this insurance and investment what is what is going to happen it is going to cost you big in long term because this small change just see if you have just invested the same with same insurance cover with 67 lakh you are getting 67 lakh with the same insurance cover instead of that if you just if you are you can have 10x cover with the same premium and still you can invest in uh, insurance means still invest in mutual funds instead of 20 uh, instead of 10 lakh 
you can have one crore cover and you can pay 20000 rupees per annum uh, premium and rest still you will be getting 30000 rupees to invest which you can invest in mutual fund and that 30000 can turn into uh, something like uh, in 25 years it can it can turn into 25000 can turn into 125000 rupees so how many of you know rule of 72 how many of you know rule of 72 please comment in the comment box if you don't know what is rule of 72 magical rule of 72 i'll i'll, I'll talk about that so what is magical rule of 72 if you know that how much money how much returns you are going to make on an instrument you will come to know that in how many years you are going to double your investment so let us see uh, in case of bank fd you are getting 6% interest so 72 divided by 6 if you do it the answer will come 12 years so in 12 years you will be able to double your capital 72 divided by 6 12 6 is 72 now if you do a math on mutual funds 15% 72 divided by 15 you will be able to double your money in four and a half years four and a half years so you have to just compound it so every four and a half years you are able to double your money in case of bank fd in 24 years what will happen your money will quadruple one will become four in 25 years because in first 12 years your money will double in second 12 years that double will again double in case of mutual fund in five years you will be able to double your money so in first five years it will double in second five years it will become 4x third five years it will become 8x in fourth five year it will become 16x and in fifth five year it will become 32x as compared to 4x in bank fd that is the big difference you are going to see and let me tell you that if you are dividing insurance and term plan differently you are going to make more money how many of you own traditional investment plans please comment in the comment box if you are owning uh, jivan saral jivan anand all those kinds of traditional insurance plans wherein the uh, the amount of insurance is low uh, the premium paid is very high so if you are still owning it yes someone has already stopped now so let me tell you there is a uh, how many of you I, I i'd like to ask that how many of you have came to know that i have made a mistake i have made a mistake in past but you are just paying it just because three more years have left four more years have left or 15 i already paid two years three years i don't want to stop that policy let me continue please comment in the comment box if you are doing that if you are doing that now or if you have done that mistake earlier so let me tell you this concept of sunk cost fallacy let me tell you the concept of sunk cost policy what i did myself let me tell you see human mind is is uh, developed in such a way or it is uh, trained in such a way that you don't want to accept losses or mistakes you don't want to accept the losses and accept the mistake that is how and that is how you will enter into more problems so I'll tell you about an example. It is called as sunk cost fallacy. And me myself, I was doing that. But when I read this book, Art of Thinking Clearly from Rolf Dobelli, I came to know about this sunk cost fallacy. And on the same day, well, I had paid two premiums of sixty thousand rupees each. Two premiums of sixty thousand rupees each, and uh, two premiums of sixty thousand rupees each. And if I had, I would have paid third premium then I didn't need anything to pay more and that policy would have continued. No, actually it was, it was three more premiums, three more premiums, minimum premium paying period was five years in that case. So I thought that I already made a mistake by paying two premiums. Why should I make more mistakes once again by paying three more premiums? I did not pay a single premium. I just stopped there and I, I accepted that loss of 1.2 lakh because Whatever the new capital which I'll be paying, uh, I'll be paying around 1.8 lakh rupees. That will just that is just going to grow 
to 3.6 lakh rupees even after 25 years if i just put that fresh money in let us say uh, mutual funds even in mutual funds i'll be able to make 32x on that so 1.8 into 30x is huge money so whatever you have already lost people give a lot of importance to that and whatever you have already made a mistake just because i have done a mistake and i have invested a effort in that or money in that i just keep on doing the same mistake once again this is what is called as sunk cost fallacy so let me ask you one question see you were see mr pankaj there is no guarantee in anything there is no guarantee in bank fd even let me tell you there is no guarantee in even bank fd if you think that bank fd is safe it is only safe to the extent of 5 lakh rupees because to the extent of 5 lakh rupees your money is safe under dig cc if you uh, just google it you will come to know and we don't want guarantee we don't want guarantee i'll come uh, come back to that number on guarantee or whenever you are asking that so what i was saying is sunk cost fallacy so let me ask you one uh, one question that you came to know that uh, about a new new movie and you thought that this is a good movie and this is from my favorite actor and let me go and watch this movie and you are not that you are not uh, that kind of a fan that even if we if we, it is a bad movie you will book a ticket at first so you are not kind of die hard fan wherein you will watch that bad movie also but you thought that this movie is too good and you just booked that ticket for your entire family like four or five people and uh, you came to know that this is a very bakwas movie and suddenly you came to know this is very bakwas movie and you sh- you have made a mistake how many of you will go and watch that movie with the entire family so people are being sensible now and telling no but most of the people might do this and this is what is called as sunk cost fallacy i already invested this much in movie how can i leave that so most of the people do this, this, this and most of the people will go and watch this movie just because they have invested that kind of money it should not go waste they already invested they have already purchased the ticket and just because this that should not go waste people will go and watch that movie this is what is called as sunk cost fallacy and in that case if you are not there, and if you are doing in case of this insurance policy you have already came to know the mistake but you are committing the same mistake once again by paying more term is having like some cost policy do you agree to this please comment in the comment box if you agree to this we will move forward with the next example so this sunk cost policy unless and only until we come out of this sunk cost policy we cannot uh, change ourselves we cannot change our financial life so understanding this and accepting this is very much important is there any loss if we stop paying paying existing premium so i lost everything so i uh, my minimum premium paying term was 5 years 2 years i paid i invested in that i am not going to get back my money i am not going to get back my money i will lose the entire 2 2 year premium but if i look it in future this 1.5 lakh rupees losing is a sensible idea than investing more 1.8 lakh rupees i already told this example by explaining you this comparison of bank fd and mutual funds i'm talking you forget mutual funds i'm talking about index funds so step number 2 is optimize and clean up other investments so most of the people are too lazy and uh, when i just ran this uh, poll most of the people 30% of this of the community today are holding more than 25 stocks in their portfolio so i i believe that you should own that much number of stocks which you can handle like what peter lynch says that investing is in stocks is like having children only have that much what you can handle so if you are not able to so beyond i believe that for a normal person it is very difficult that he can concentrate more than 15 stocks so having if you are having 20 25 30 40 50 stocks it is not going to change your uh, wealth life in any way so that's why you need to have a clean up optimize your stocks 
come back to the optimum number the way you can understand it the way you can track it and number of number two is optimize your, your mutual fund so just for the sake of diversification i've seen that many people own more than four to five schemes mutual fund schemes see what is mutual fund mutual fund itself diversifies your portfolio in 25 30 40 50 stocks and when you're owning four mutual funds it means that you are owning the whole market so if you want to own four mutual funds you should own an index fund instead because by owning four mutual funds this one will be owning different stock this one will be owning different stock this might be owning different stock there might be some common stocks so instead of having four to five mutual fund schemes it is better to own index fund single index fund because anyway you are going to own index do you agree to this please comment in the comment box you should not have see one one multi cap mutual fund is also better and uh, i don't feel a need of going in mutual fund more than two to three schemes and a lot of people give more importance to so mr jaspreet in that case you can own multi cap which can uh, invest in large cap mid cap and small cap so that job is done or if you uh, want to so uh, it depends upon the fund philosophy i don't give much importance between mujhe hdfc ka fund lena hai ya mujhe sirf isi ka lena hai what i'll do is i'll see what is their investment philosophy what is their process and based on that i will invest i will never look at their past returns most of the people look at past returns and invest but let me tell you returns whatever the mutual fund generates it is transient and mean reversion is imminent so performance of the mutual fund is transient in one year you will see underperforming in second year you will see different set of mutual funds which will outperform and I, I like to invest in one of the mutual funds which haven't performed anyway so last so let me tell you my example when i picked motila loswal mid cap fund in uh, 2014 2013 motila loswal mid cap fund 2014 actually so it was a newly launched fund motila loswal motila loswal most focused mid cap 25 fund compared to that there were a lot of funds like hdfc mid cap opportunities and uh, um, uh, one more fund was Axis Mid Cap Fund. There, there were a lot of good funds which were having long track record, but I went ahead with Motila Roswell. Only reason was that the process I liked. Second, they were they were having a uh, portfolio, uh, uh, means uh, focused portfolio, and in that period, all mid cap funds were too much underperforming, and everyone was shy to invest in mutual funds. Everyone was uh, uh staying away from the mid caps it was because for seven years it was a six years it was a very bad period for mid cap funds so i invested in motila loswal mid cap fund just because i believe in the process and i believe in mean reversion and i believe that the fund performance is transient and let me tell you that the decision went right and in that year the best performing fund was motila oswal most focused mid cap 30 so lagard became the leader so i look at the funds wherein the lagard can become a leader so just uh, one year back uh, i liked dsp blackrock tiger fund invesco psu fund so this is what i liked one year back so and these were the worst performer funds if you compare it from five year perspective and 10 years perspective so if you go and check past returns you are not going to make money you should be able to see future if you are not able to see future you can ask your uh, financial advisor that what are the funds which we can invest and his selection of funds should not be based on past returns again his selection of funds he should be able to understand the market at first because i have seen a lot of mutual fund advisors they don't know how the market will behave most of the mutual fund advisors I have seen, they don't know how market will behave. They don't know about PE. They don't know about book value. They don't know about much of the things. And still they have become advisor just because they can sell it. Just, uh, mutual fund advisory business has become like LIC advisor. If someone is not able to do anything, they become mutual fund. This was the case two years back because I have trained many mutual fund uh, people who were LIC uh, agents now become uh, mutual fund agents. So I have seen that. So your advisor should be competent and you should be able to 
ask your advisor how to optimize these mutual funds now optimize your bank accounts i have seen a lot of people having many bank account and they themselves don't know that in what bank account they are being charged and they are charged heavily and their balance is going down has it happened to you please comment in the comment box if, if it has happened to you that you uh, just because of some reasons you kept on uh, opening new accounts uh, and uh, you are being charged and you are too lazy to close those accounts so optimization is important because these all small amount of money will cost you big if you just open your bank account or statement yourself you'll come to know that we are too lazy to unsubscribe from some uh, uh, some of the subscriptions and some of the things and it is if you just uh, calculate that you are actually spending more than 50 60000 on an annual basis this is the real cases i have seen because uh, uh, i was i was working as a personal finance uh, consultant uh, some Three years back, I have seen at least 70, 75 cases, uh, at least 100 cases. Most of the people are lazy to even close those subscriptions and all these things. So keep only two, two bank accounts is enough, two to three bank accounts. You don't need more than accounts and at least have one joint account. How many of you don't have joint account? Have at least one joint account because and emergency fund, if you are creating, keep that in joint account because in your absence, your wife should be able to access that joint account because have at least one joint account and pay all these premiums and all these things from the joint account so that uh, the process becomes easy so clean up self uh, number four is optimize your credit cards there is a myth of minimum payment in credit card charges you see a lot of people just do minimum payment and they think that they will not be charged penalty but this rolling compounding works against you if you are not paying it full so don't do that and just pay each and everything and at least that I, till now i didn't had any credit card just i recently purchased and that to incorporate we purchased the credit we took that credit card just because most of the online payments uh usb some of the platforms uh they are they are not accepting debit card so that's why i had this credit card just for that purpose personally i don't have credit card itself so myth of paying using full limit most of the people use full limit all the time you can read this book because i do i'm not remembering because i am not concerned with this credit card so i don't know what are the real disadvantages because this is the webinar i took last year one year back you can read that book a lot of things i have given in that book let us move ahead step number four is emergency fund planning uh so a lot of people think but i have already good amount of cash in bank see if you are keeping emergency fund in your bank and if you think that uh, okay i missed step number three i think step number three is health insurance so at least so this i felt last year but now the if you see this year covid is like anything it can cost you like anything so i think i believe the average middle class person should have anywhere between 15 lakh rupees as bare minimum uh, health insurance cover but it should be a formula based not 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 just uh, rough look at your health insurance premium as advanced payment for big future expenses in small parts this will help you psychologically more comfortable buy health insurance when you are not in need because when you are in need no one will be able to give you and most of the people will be having health insurance but they are not aware being aware is also important there are three kinds of insurance first is uh which reimburses the expenses like room charges nursing surgeon uh, surgeon and consultant anesthetist fees cost of blood oxygen and ot and second is hospital cash benefits third is critical illness plans so i am having two kinds of uh, health insurance first is normal health insurance along with that there is a critical illness because most of the critical illness are not covered in the normal health insurance uh so i'm having that both because future is uncertain i cannot tell that I cannot face a heart attack, I cannot face cancer, I cannot face, face paralysis, anything can happen with anybody, uh, we should be well prepared. Uh, so remember, I believe that health insurance is a wealth insurance. Health insurance is like wealth insurance, most of the people lose their lifetime savings and lifetime wealth creation in one health event, one health crisis event. And these are the times today when 
all family together can have health crisis so having adequate health insurance is also important so adequate is keyword here step number four is emergency fund planning a lot of people think that but i already have a good amount of cash in bank cash in bank will not help because most of the time you will utilize the cash and you will be suffering uh, during the real need so cash in bank cannot be considered as a emergency fund what i think is there should be a separate joint account that can be done or liquid funds a lot of people uh, emergency fund should be like atm you should be able to withdraw it immediately it should be kept in saving account don't keep it in bank fd also because in case of bank fd you have to go and withdraw in case of saving bank you can withdraw it from the atm because that's why it is called as emergency fund and don't think about return here this, this money we are not coming uh, keeping it to gain returns this money we are keeping it so that emergency we i'll be able to get that cash so keep it in bank account but have a separate joint account for emergency fund or uh, so that's how you can plan the bank account so peace of mind it emergency fund gives you peace of mind if you have adequate insurance and uh, let me ask you that how much percent of your total net worth you are investing in stocks i'm talking about total net worth not cash surplus how much percentage of your total net worth you are investing in stocks and mutual funds together so if you are investing more than 20 percent of your net worth in stocks or 25 percent of your total net worth in stocks i think you should have a minimum emergency fund of one year minimum emergency fund of one year if you are above 25 percent i think you should need an emergency fund of at least two years up to 50 percent and most of the and along with that if you are invested in real estate because most of the people will be having real estate as their major asset and people might be having close to 50 to 80 percent of their total investments in real estate so <clears throat> So if you are having about 50%, for me, above 50%, two years of emergency fund is highly important thing because bad markets and along with bad economic situation, wherein you might have to lose a job, you can be sacked unless and until you are a government employee. Nobody knows when we can lose our job, great recession. So in that case, two years of uh, Expense as emergency fund is very much important for the people who are at more than 40, 45, 50 percent invested in stocks. Because otherwise, if you don't have emergency fund, adequate emergency fund, you'll end up selling the stock at the wrong time. When there is, and whenever you sell in panic, you always sell cheap. Whenever you sell in panic, you always sell cheap. So emergency fund is like having a peace of mind in investing a proper adequate in, more the better more the better so i have kept two years of my expense and i want to uh, up it to three years because my 90 percent of my total wealth is in stocks not even mutual funds i don't own any mutual fund at all so no, no need to worry if i lose a job suddenly what if i met an accident cannot earn for the next six months what if suddenly need money for an unexpected event and along with the emergency fund there is a how many of you own this insurance called as partial disability personal accident and partial disability please comment in the comment box you may be owning health insurance you may be owning life insurance but chances are less that you are owning personal accident and partial disability the lot of insurance company mix it with term insurance, but I prefer to take it separately. It comes as a rider, but it comes with the complications. So I believe that there should be different policies. So personally, I have taken different personal accident and partial disabilities kept different from the term insurance. I want everything pure, no complexities because whenever these riders come, there are some criteria. And during the need, we will not be able to claim that. So I will take uh, personal accident and partial disability 
from from that expert i have i'm having hdfc ergo so and uh, health insurance from star alive and life insurance from lic and max new york life combined so this is what i have done for myself and a uh, lot of people think that mujhe personal accident or partial disability kyu chahiye so you cannot tell that because of partial disability if you are not able to work for next 2 years do you think to do you think that this is not going to happen with you if you don't if you think that this is not going to happen with you you don't need any kind of insurance at all you are god actually so i believe that personal accident or partial disability is must and it cost very less it cost very less i think it cost 1/10th of life insurance mr jaspreet i can manage my own money I, I, why i want to blame someone for not managing my, managing my money properly so it, so i can manage money myself better so i am not investing anything in mutual funds so how much to keep aside so i have already told where to invest i have already told emergency funds help you maintain discipline in investing emergency fund is a protective layer for financial life hope you got it so step number 5 is short term and long term goal planning how to calculate the future value of your goal how much you need to save where to invest for your goals so we'll talk about that so how to calculate the future value so as i have told roughly you can use the uh, formula magical rule of 72 so years to maturity is 15 15 years his age at maturity if your age 35 your age at maturity will be 15 and the present cost is 5 lakh you just do a math of by doing the reverse calculation if you are expecting uh, 7% inflation so you will come to know that how much the money roughly will be so with the present cost is 5 lakh rupees use just rule of 72 at 7% inflation in how many years you the value of prices prices of the goods will be doubled inflation will double please comment in the comment box what will what will be the number in in around uh, 11 years 10 years the prices will double 10 years prices will double so for 5 lakh present cost for 10 years in 10 years the 5 lakh will grow to I means it will be uh, if it is costing 5 lakh it will cost 10 lakh and for the next 5 years again you just do a math you will get a future cost so calculate this is how you can calculate the future cost for various goals so how much to save so if the years to maturity is 15 years your age to mat at maturity is 50 the total amount required is 13 lakh 79000 so at expected return at just 15% return in mutual funds your monthly investment will come down to 2000 rupees so uh, the people who read this book seriously i will be taking a session for them and i will be providing a tool a calculator i have made a calculator some 6 years back i let uh, i'll find that calculator you just have to put your numbers and you can plan your own financial life so how many of you are committed to do that you must read the whole book first then i'll take a workshop in that workshop i'll be teaching you how to plan your financial life today is just the webinar which i'm conducting so that you become aware how to plan your uh, financial life yes so uh but don't expect it too early because i might take in next one month uh one to two month i'll take that session but i i'll i'm sure and i give you a word that whoever has ordered this book and read this book completely for them i'll take that session of of session of everyone for everyone so that we come back to that number how much future value is required and all these things so monthly in 15% interest uh, uh 15% return product you have to invest 2000 rupees for this goal or one time lump sum investment you have to do 169000 one time at one go in 8% return expected product you have to invest 3900 or 434000 at one go for this product for this goal for second goal same way you can calculate i'll come back to, to on that session how to use calculate this there is a ready made uh, calci which i have developed uh, So hope you got this. How to calculate this? Just see the difference. 
here you have to save monthly 2000 rupees here you have to save monthly 4000 so as i told that those people who want guaranteed returns saving this and achieving this goal will be close to impossible at 6% return so investing in 15% return products like mutual funds index funds or in stocks if you are able to understand the stock market properly you can do it in stocks but if you are not able to do it do it with mutual funds or index funds so is investing in these kind of products wherein you can get 15% is not a choice you don't have a choice because in these products you will not be able to plan your future you will not be able to invest that much just see the amount 4000 4000 16000 16 and 4 uh, 16 and 4 is uh, 20 20 plus 5 is 25 for these goal protection i have not even talked about child marriage this is just education and plus education along with retirement it will be close to 50000 rupees per annum and the salary will be 50000 rupees per annum so investing in 6 to 8 percent you don't have choice because in through that you will not be able to achieve anything in your life because the inflation is growing at 8 percent you will not be able to grow that capital uh, do you agree to this please comment in the comment box do if you agree to what i am saying that investing in 15 percent is a compulsion not a choice because by choice you will not be able to achieve your goals in any way it's not a choice so you have to invest in investments which can beat inflation so we'll come back to the part at a later stage why guaranteed returns are not important because if you are running for guarantee you will not achieve anything in your life because there is no guarantee for anything but i will tell you about a framework wherein uh, you will forget that what is the guarantee because there is no need of guarantee at all so we'll come to that at a later stage step number 6 is start your retirement planning so if you earn for 30 years and you 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 earn for 30 years but you need that money for 60 years 30 years while working and 30 years when you are not working so how much you will need at retirement so if the current expense is 3 lakh rupees future value of this 3 lakh assuming assuming age 35 currently at the retirement age 60 so 16 lakh rupees will be annual expenses you just do a math this numbers might look big you have this magical formula of 72 average inflation rate is 7% i'll come to that point why i'm telling 7% i'll come with that data i'm not uh, talking in air i'm just uh, i'll just show that data life expectancy is 80 years as we are progressing in this uh, pharmaceutical and all this medical field average expectancy is on the rise average life expectancy is on the rise so life expectancy considering that 80 retirement of 20 age of 20 life corpus required 16 lakh into 20 years will be equal to 3.2 crores inflation factor if you just uh, do it 1.5x so retirement corpus required will be 5 crore this is for a person who have who has a monthly expense of just 30000 rupees for a person who is having 30000 rupees expense today will need a retirement corpus of 5 crore so how many of you so most of the people will be having 30000 rupees expense so how many of you have built 5 crore so this is future value 5 crore worth of retirement corpus or you are, you know that you need a retirement corpus of 5 crore please comment in the comment box that you are you are uh, aware that you you will need 5 crore at the time of retirement if the expense is 30000 so retirement corpus is required 5 crore and most of the people today just because of the social media and it is not bad actually most of the people want to retire at 45 age how many of you want to retire at 45 50 in between 45 to 50 <laughs> yes this is just free so lot of people think that it is not possible it is possible if you are if you want to invest if you are ready to invest in yourself if you are ready to learn new things learn new skills and increase your income if you are not able to increase your income you are not going to retire 
early. So to retire early, your income should be increased. And most of the people, they don't invest in themselves. If you are not investing in yourself, retiring at 45, 50 will become an impossible thing. But it is possible if you invest in yourself because most self-education pays you the best interest. And if you agree to my word, self-education pays you the best interest. But most of the people don't do that. Let us move ahead. So I'm, uh, that's why I'm not, be, I'm not being ambitious to retire early. I'm just talking about 60. If you want to retire early, the number will go up in a bigger way, in, in a big way. So just think about it. Step number seven. So, so we know that uh, just comment in the comment box. No, uh, there's no need of comment. So most of the goals like child education, child marriage and your retirement are 15 years away from today's age for most of the people 10 15 years 20 years away from today's age so so where to save power of compounding effect so if your money is growing at 8% the money will grow like this the power of compounding effect the money will grow like this in a linear way some sort of a linear way it is actually moving up but it is it is like it is looking like linear in 25 years. If you are growing at 15, 10%, your money will be like this. So 100 rupee invested will be close to 200 rupees or uh, let us say 400 rupees in 25 years. If your money is growing at 10%, your 100 rupee invested will be at 700 rupees. If your money is growing at 15%, your 100 rupee will grow to 3,500. So that is the gap. That is the big gap. Signi difference is quite significant. A lot of people think that if I get a return of 15% instead of in 8%, my money will, if I, if I'm making 2x earlier, now I'll make 4x. How many of you think that, that if the returns get double, I will get double money. So it is, it doesn't happen like that. So power of compounding, the interest on interest, it does wonders. Einstein has said that power of compounding is eighth wonder in the world. Those who know it and accept it and understand it, they are in a better position. And those who don't understand it, they are they will not do anything in their life because understanding this can save from slavery. It can save you from slavery. So if you understand this beautiful concept of power of compounding. So let us move ahead. So someone please comment the exact quote of uh, Mr. Albert Einstein. So performance of different asset classes. So if you see performance of different asset classes, inflation rebase to 100, rebase to 100. I'm just, uh, so this next data is not available. I think uh, this is uh, okay, but until 2010, even if we have this data, it is enough. So if something was costing 1000 rupees in 1981, today in, in 2010, it was costing at 6000 rupees in 10 year again at inflation 7% at 72 divided by uh, 7 will be close to 10 years. So in 10 years, that 6000 rupees has become 12,000. So whatever it used to cost 1000 rupees in 1981, today it is costing 12,000 rupees as on today. So percentage change, if you just do average here, so this is the percentage change, the average will come around 7%. So average inflation rate, this is WPI inflation. This is WPI inflation. So if you compare that with gold, how many of you think that, uh, yes, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world, this is what Albert Einstein said. One who understands it, earns it, one who doesn't, Pays it. So understanding this beautiful concept is very much important if you want to change your financial life. So gold, how many of you think that gold has created and it has given massive returns in past 30, 35 years? How many of you think that gold has given massive returns in past 30, 35 years? So let it will be eye opener, eye opener for you if you think that gold has given massive returns. So gold, how much it has given? So gold value was close to 1500 rupees gold value was 1500 rupees in 1981 
and in 2010 it was close to 15,000. Now it is close to 50,000. If you just do a math, if you do just do a math of average, it has given 9.5 percent returns. 9 percent returns, close to 9 to 9.5 percent return. If you just go and check this one, this uh, next slide is not present actually, unfortunately. But uh, I'll uh, post that updated chart on Telegram channel so that you all are aware. Today's gold return, if you compare it with 30 year, it has given 9.5 percent return. So gold has beaten inflation. So gold can be considered as a hedge against inflation. It cannot create you massive wealth. It cannot create you massive wealth. It is a safe investment. It can be considered as a hedge against inflation. So it can protect you from the inflation, but it cannot create you wealth. If you just do a math. So silver, silver has given close to 9% return, same way, 8% return actually. If you silver was costing 2600, uh, in 2010, it was costing at uh, around 25,000. Now it is at 70,000. The average return, what silver has given, is close to 8.5-9%. Eight, eight I'll post that detailed uh, chart on Telegram channel. FD, if you have done FD, average return is close to 8%. So past, past uh, 30 years data. PPF, it has given more than FD, half a percent more than FD. But there is one instrument which has given the best return among all those asset classes that is only one asset class that is equities now if you compare that with sensex so sensex was trading at 173 rupees in 1981 sensex was trading at 173 rupees in 1981 today it is trading at 50000 today it is trading at 50000 compared to gold 1500 1500 current price is 50000 sensex then it was 173 rupees Today, I means 173, the index was at 173. Today it is at 50,000. So BSC Sensex has given more returns than gold. If you look at 30 years, but 173, but it has not given 15% return or whatever we are saying that uh, markets can give you 15% return. Sensex has given 15% return. So what has happened in past 30 years? Just do and check and cross check yourself. Sensex. 173 ka 50,000 ho gaya. In past 30, 35, 40 years, what all bad events have happened with the economy? What all bad events have happened with the markets? If you just check, there was Indira Gandhi assassination, there was Rajiv Gandhi assassination, there was Harshad Mehta scam, there was Ketan Parekh scam, there was a dot-com bubble, there was a global financial crisis, there was paper tantrum, there was um, government which was not efficient there were a lot of scam 2g scam and uh, char uh, whatever you may just uh, commonwealth scam all those scam have happened with the country i'm not um, a supporter of any government brexit happened a lot of things brexit is a small thing irrelevant for us not much big relevance compared to what events i've talked so all these bad things have happened with the economy with the country still the indexes went up from 173 to 50,000, which is which is close to 15% return on a longer term basis. So, what are the goals? So, if you see the goals, so in long term, we have understood that Sensex is the best place which can give you returns in uh, long term. So, see, it has not given best good returns in the in each year. If you see in 1982, it has given 26% return. In 1983, it has given minus 3% return. In 1984, it has given 16% return, 85, 44%. But in year 87, it has given minus 11%. In year 88, it has given minus 22%. In year 93, it has given minus 47%. In year 2009, it has given minus 38%. So, and in year 2003, it has given minus 12%. If the index has gone down 12%, individual stocks have gone more than 2x than that. So, if the index has gone more than 12%, so the individual stock might have gone down 25 percent so that the that is the case uh, because index is all about average so all these bad things have happened and uh, how many of you I, I, let me ask you one question most of the people are investing in stock market so how many of you can invest and stay invested in stocks even after 50 percent correction 
in their holding value please comment in the comment box how many of you can hold the stocks even after 50 percent of the correction in your total holding value total holding value and when and this is what warren buffet also says that if you cannot see markets coming down 50 percent without being panic stricken with panic that is different but without panic if you are uh, able to hold it and it is not that and most of the people if you are commenting about it consider that it should the, the amount of money invested in stock should be more than 20 25 percent of the net worth so what is the uh, equity allocation ideal equity allocation so it is 100 minus age rule so how much equity should you own or how much maximum equity you should, you can own my age is like let us say 31 so i can have my 69 percent of my portfolio in equities because higher lower the age my risk taking capability is higher because my my i need my money for child education child marriage and retirement after 15 20 years so less the year more the allocation towards equities and if you see if you see 15 year gap what the 15 year gap so 82 2 plus plus 15 82 plus 15 uh, you have never made a loss if you are 10 year plus in markets forget 15 10 year plus in markets you have never made a loss so if you had invested in uh, 1982 82 plus 10 92 so 218 has become like uh, 4200 so you have not lost so this is rolling returns this is rolling return let us say uh, if you had invested at the top during harshad mehta not actually top because if you invest at a euphoric valuation you are bound to lose money but if you will uh, uh, you will have to just extend your time so if you have 10 to 15 years kind of horizon so because your goals are above 15 years all these child marriage child education and uh, even if you had invested in harshad mehta times in 1992 just see after 15 years what has happened index was at 4200 so after 92 plus 15 is close to 2007 so in 2007 the index is at uh, 13000 so you have not lost money so do you need a guarantee of returns now please comment in the comment box that uh, you need a guarantee of returns now in markets because you should put only that money in money in markets and what are uh, and all the goals which you are investing for your goal, pro goal protection means creating your uh, dreams and all all those goals are above 15 years so why do you need a guarantee so data itself is saying that 15 year rolling return you will not make a loss you will not make a loss so why there is a need of guarantee so there is no need of guarantee in uh, asset class so no asset class can give you as high as return as high return as equity so bitcoin is the recent asset class but no one very very few people understand it and i am i will not invest a single penny in bitcoin because i understand i don't understand why it is going up so equity is safest in the long term fd is most dangerous in the long term fd is safest in the short term most dangerous in the long term because you are losing on inflation you are losing on inflation most people don't think that fd is good for short term equity is good for long term so think equity is as your child and growing your child needs 10 15 20 years and same like in equities you need 10 15 20 years experience so i believe that at least you should not put in direct stocks the money if you are needing it after 5 years you should not put a means if you are needing the money before 5 years you should not invest a single penny in stock markets how many of you have invested that kind of money please comment in the comment box which you might require uh, after three years two years or one year and you have invested that kind of money in stocks because stocks are risky in short term and five years is short term five years is uh, three less than three years is at least short term less than three years is you are doing speculating you are you are doing gambling in stock market so if you have put money which you might require up to two three years two years or one year uh, you are basically not following the principles of investing in stock markets so you should never do that only invest that money which you will not require 
for for five years, at least five years. Uh, if you are investing at the right valuation, if you are investing with the right allocation, so this is how it is important. So step number eight, everything clear till now? Please comment in the comment box if you are clear till now. We'll move ahead. So step number eight is be ready with your credit score report, credit report and score. Factors that might affect your credit score, late payment, missed payment, please don't do that. A lot of things have, a lot of tricks the author has given in this book. Late payment, miss, missed payments, higher percentage of unsecured credit. So what is secure credit? The credit which you have taken, the loan which you have taken against some security is called as secured. The loan which you have taken without any security, personal uh, personal loan is comes in unsecured credit, credit card comes in unsecured credit. So if you are having more personal loan and more credit card loan, it is going to affect you, your credit score. And if your credit score is low, it, it is going to affect you in many ways. Too many inquiries in short period of time. So if you are not getting loan somewhere, don't keep on inquiring because in short period of time, if you are keeping it inquiring, it will uh, affect the credit score. Now, settlement of load or running away, uh, already having a lot of credit, growing credit over time, utilizing full credit each month, co-sign joint loans, please avoid joint loans. Uh, it can create a big problem in future because you don't know what you, uh, because I have seen some of the in business, lot of people help each other and do that joint account joint loans and they become a guarantor don't uh, be in that kind of situation wherein you can be in trouble uh, advantages of a good score it can you can demand a lower interest rate actually from the banks because good credit score means you are paying on time you are taking care of each and everything you can actually demand with interest rate and uh, uh, from the banks apart from that you can uh, if they are not uh, lowering lowering your interest rate because uh, if you are paying it on a regular basis, their risk on that loan is low. If there is low risk, they should be able to give you low interest rate. How many of you were unaware of this? Please comment uh, so that. So now you are aware. So processing fees, if they are not able to, let us say, uh, reduce the interest rate, at least you can tell them to, uh, what do I say, uh, wave off the processing fees and charges or late payment charges or sorry, prepayment charges, uh, waiver of prepayment penalty, faster loan processing can happen. So these are all the advantages of a good credit score. Step number nine is debt re repayment. So what you can do is reduction of 10% expenses. So a lot of people, if you see, a lot of people, they don't, they buy the things which they are don't need. And Warren Buffett has already said, if you are, if you are buying the things which you don't need, soon you have to sell the things which you need. So if you just do a, how many of you do this monthly budgeting? How many of you? Because earlier I used to do that multi uh, monthly budgeting. Now th that has become a habit. I used to have an Excel sheet earlier, just three, four, uh, four years back. Now it has become a habit and automatically it, it happens. But earlier, uh, this budgeting is very important, but you, you should know that how much you should know that how much you are actually spending. So if you just do a calculation and if you just go through your expenses, whatever you are doing, you can, you'll know that you can reduce 10% of your non-needing expense. This becomes very important for the salaried employee because business person, people, they can keep on increasing uh, their income at an exponential rate. But for a salaried person, this becomes very important. So you can reduce 10% of your expenses. Me, myself, I was able to reduce 14% of my expenses, which was non-needy. A uh, lot of subscription were uh, pending and all this, uh, cutting down the unwanted subscription, it has, uh, saved me a lot cutting down the non-requiring uh, bank account it has saved me out dmat accounts which were non-operating and i was just uh, getting charged on amcs and all these things so i just cut down on all these expenses i saved 10 percent so that 10 percent was going based i just converted that into investments taking internal credit so whenever you need a debt you don't directly go for loan ask for the internal credit in your family members and all these things because taking credit to internal it can help you to have a good credit score liquidating some investments to pay off loans this can be a good decision because see if you are getting six percent in uh, returns on some some of the traditional insurance plan and if you are paying a 12 percent or eight percent return on home loan it makes sense to uh, come out of that policy which we have already made the mistake to pay off the loan low return generating instruments stuck somewhere all these can be uh, taken out and we can invest that in uh, 
uh, liquidating the uh, means uh, reducing of uh, paying off our loans and let your next increment go to pay off the debt see i i have seen and means i always regret if i had a frugal life at the earlier stage i used to spend a lot on my friends because i started earning much earlier in my uh, uh, age means i started because i started my uh, first business at the age uh, 13 but, but that was a small thing but at the age 17 really i started making good amount of money at the age 21 i would i made 21 lakh uh, 20 21 lakh at the age 21 so but i i was not frugal i used to spend a lot so this this costed me a big in investment because if i had i was doing this in investments in stock but if i would have focused less on futures and options and if i would have invested that, that in long term i used to do a lot of futures and options earlier and i have lost a lot of money and uh, if i would have been frugal saved unwanted because i used to do a lot of unwanted expenses so if would have just saved that my situation today would be at whole different level than that because you need to cut down your expenses which you don't need a lot of times you will be expending just because in this today's world when there is social media you end up buying something which you will not need just because your neighbor is doing something or just because your uh, social media is showing something uh, the lifestyle of people have become so bad that they are not frugal now compared to earlier because our saving rate of our country has came down from 32 percent to 26 percent please comment in the comment box if you think that social media has actually affected the spending uh, profile of a person please comment in the comment box so you don't give much importance to social media because uh, there is no need to show off anything because uh, showing how much money you have is the best way to have less money is the best way to have less money with you when you are in need so if interest rate goes down as the ask the bank to decrease the tenure and keep the emi constant a lot of people what they do is they ask bank to reduce the emi so don't do that instead of that reduce do the other way you can prepay the loan online by linking your loan account with bank account this will help you prepay as soon as when you are ready with the money you will get out of the laziness step number 10 organize your financial life it happens right bank deducts 100 rupees from your bank account and there is no trace less chances of knowing about it correct so financial documents are scattered all around you know financial information is family is unaware of pending task in your life pending from long and that is still pending your financial life requires a lot of in manual intervention and you have not optimized it so well that you can do it online if the answer is yes then you need to Fix the thing as a and become organized. So how you can you can take a snapshot of this and or you can uh, go through this video whenever it will be uploaded on YouTube. Just take a snapshot of this. So how to organize your documents? So this is a quick uh, thing. So what are the tax documents? All are these are all the tax documents. Tax acknowledgement return, TDS certificate, tax paid acknowledgement, any other document for taxation, bank documents, FD recurring documents bank checks terms and condition passport so keep have different file for each of the thing don't mix it because in your absence wife will not be able to recognize between the documents it might happen because we don't know how financially literate she is and take a step important step to make your wife financially literate because if she is not financially literate it will be very tough for her it can be a big problem in future so fixed deposit recurring deposit bank checks terms and condition passbook and insurance paper life insurance original policy life insurance premium paint acknowledgement health insurance original policy health insurance premium paint acknowledgement any communication in writing investment paper demand account future fund stock pf ppf copy of will bonds nsc loan paper title deeds home loan any return agreement car loan papers different monthly bills all these things apart from that have a black box this black box will help you and your means help your family during the bad times so you just uh, have a black box of this ca his contact number life insurance agent his contact agent health insurance agent his contact number financial planner tax consultant then 
the, in this black box, it should contain your driving license, driving license number, where it is stored, passport, its number, PAN card, locker keys, its number, where it is stored, steps to claim life insurance. So you should have an algorithm. You can create a flowchart in that uh, file and you can have the steps to claim health insurance because you are aware your wife might not be. So to make her financially aware, to you, you can do this all. Step to claim health insurance, how to redeem mutual funds, steps to sell the house. So anything can happen. We don't know. We, the future is uncertain. COVID has taught us a lot of new things. Future is uncertain. So having this will help. And uh, creating this black box has many advantages. And it is useful in various situations like when you are dead, when you are critically injured and not able to communicate. Situation number three is you are not, uh, not around for a few days and cannot be contacted. Situation number four is emergency situation when your family quickly needs information. Situation number five is when you are then you need various kinds of information yourself. So next step is understand the risk bonus step, understand the risk in investment products, understand potential of investment products to create wealth for you to lead a rich lifestyle, security preservation, goal, growth, understand difference between the security products, preservation products and growth products. Security products are bank saving account, preservation products are uh, LICs, uh, uh, and what I say, uh, there is something it is called. I don't remember the name. Once you, this is especially for the retired people, wherein you pay in one uh, one time amount and you get the payouts on a regular basis. Annuity. So annuity products is preservation growth. What are the growth products? Uh, growth products are mutual funds, equity, direct investments. So understand the various things. So this is the financial planning pyramid. So your liquidity, unless and until you have done this, you should not move ahead. Once you have done, done this, you should move ahead. Once you have done this, you should move ahead. So a lot of people do ulta. Actually, they start your legacy is stock market investing. Stock market investing directly should come at last, not at start. So first you should do your liquidity uh, planning three to six month expenses. I have done two years, uh, one year. Someone can do one year. It depends upon your need. Your risk cover, life health, personal accident, critical illness, home insurance. Then comes your dreams, child education, marriage, retirement. Then comes your legacy. When you are completed that, then you should consider about fortune creation, wealth creation and investing directly in stock. A lot of people do it ulta. So if you buy the things which you don't need, soon you will be selling the things which you need. This is what Warren Buffett said. This is what how to save on groceries. But you can do a lot of... Uh, uh, Google it on internet. There is a lot of uh, tips and tricks available. So monthly budget planner, the people who are committed till now attended this meet till the end. I, uh, I announced that I will take a free workshop for everyone. Uh, but the, the advanced workshop might be costing. So let me get back to that point. So what kind of website I want to do that. So I'll post that on uh, telegram channel. Uh, you can attend that workshop. How many of you want to attend such kind of workshop? It might cost very less, uh, but first and foremost, you should read this book. If there are any questions, I'm ready for the questions. I'm open for the questions. So remember, failing to plan is planning to fail. So you can buy Kindle version. You can buy Kindle version. So I don't have any idea on NPS because I was working on this personal finance earlier. So you can have, you can hire a good uh, financial planner for you. Uh, this workshop was to make you aware that each and everything you can consult your financial advisor because it will take a lot of time to understand you as a person, what are your needs and all these things. So you can get a better answer from your financial advisor. For your from your uh, especially certified financial planner, if you are able to hire someone, especially certified financial planner, if you are able to hire someone, it will be a good thing. This webinar was only to make you aware of the things, and you can read that book actually if you know want to know more. That book has all the answers, most of the answers. Yes, Mr. Rati. No, I cannot educate you on taxation planning. I, this webinar was just to make people aware. Uh, because I'm not the right person to tell you about tax planning. One of our team members is CA, but uh, 
let us let me check if he can create a session we can create if we can create a joint session on that let us see in future will we might come on youtube let us see so please permit me to end this webinar Thank you.